Hello Internet and welcome back. In the last video I stopped when uh, we had to talk about the touchscreen and the external flash. So let's get down to business. If you got my reference, I salute you. Um, well, <laughs> let's start with the external flash, shall we? And uh, before we do the actual implementation, I'll show you something. So this is the Let's just get the right camera. This is the data sheet for, uh, for the STM32 F746 disco board. So this is a quad SPI flash memory. And this is what we are going to or try to, to recreate. Uh, and if we find this in 25Q128A, if we just do a quick Google search for that, and um, this is a Micron chip, we will see that when the page loads, this part is obsolete, which is not good because let me just be very clear about this. The way I have solved this is I'm using a chip that is exactly the same as the, um, as, as the original one. And uh, if we go in and look at the data sheet again, this is actually not a Micron chip, this, um, it's another brand that was acquired acquired by Micron. Um, so, uh, and we can actually find it here. So we can uh, go into their serial no flash part catalog here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it's it's this one. Oh no, it's not this one. Let's just uh, find the 128 here. Um, I think it's actually the first one on the list. This MT 25QL uh, 128ABA1ESE. Uh, this one is actually, it's not just pin compatible, it even has the same ID codes. So this is a drop-in replacement. Um, this was pointed out to me by someone in the community forum, uh, who was clearly much more knowledgeable than me uh, on this matter. So what I decided to do is I'm going to use this exact chip for, for my project. Um, there are, this is in a production. So we can get this. And uh, if we go back here, you can see we have actually, we have the, the same uh, ABA1 ESE here. We have the zero SIT package and we have the MSIT. And I think the only difference is, um, there was a package difference at some point, but, but hey. I'm going with the with the topmost one. That's the one I have uh, acquired, and that's that is the one I have attached to my board. That also means that I can use the uh, s the discovery board, the F um, seven four six discovery board drivers for this. So let's uh, dive into that one. If we uh, have a look at uh, the uh, I go to my user here and I go to my STM32 cube. There's this repository and we have uh, different packs, uh, but we also have the, the firmware, the cube firmware for the F7s. And I think we need to go into drivers. Remember this video, uh, I'm just gonna give you everything uncut because then you can, um, yeah, you can benefit from that, I guess. Uh, let's go here, BSP, I think, components, yes. So in this folder here, we have all the drivers. Um, the FT5336, that's the touchscreen, and the N25Q128A is the external flash. And we'll also have a common folder here with some uh, different interfaces here. So I'm just gonna copy the common folder the FT5336 and the N25Q128A. Copy those and I'm gonna insert that into my own project. Let's just uh, navigate to that project, shall we? Uh, I can just go over here and I can, uh, this is my project here, I can say show in uh, System Explorer and then we have the actual folder here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drop these three folders, uh, not here, sorry, 
I'm going to remove those again and go back to my components. I'm going to create a folder called components. Let me just check here. A capital components like this and insert these three folders here. Also, I'm going to go back here and we're going to find this uh, STM32746 G discovery folder. And you can see here we have uh, the underscore TS that is a touchscreen and underscore QSPI that is the quad SPI flash. And I'm going to copy those. So I'm going to create a folder over here uh, next to components, create a folder called STM32746 G with capital dash discovery. It's not really matter. Uh, it's not important what this folder is called. I'm just going to copy this uh, name for so it's easier to remember. Uh, I'm going to use the discovery. This is a main file. I'm going to use the quad SPI and I'm going to use a touch screen. Just copy those over here. So now I have uh, created um, yeah, the I, ha I have copied all the information that I need from the discovery board drivers. Uh, I want to include these files here. First of all, I can press F5. Uh, you can see that components and the STM32 F7, or not F, uh, but this for these two folders show up. So they are known in the project, but they are not included yet. So we cannot use them for anything. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click on my project here and go to properties. And if I can find this here, it's called path and symbols under the C slash C++ general. So this is where we are including um, files from. And I'm going to go to source location and I'm going to add the two folders. I'm going to add the components folder and I'm going to add the STM32746 discovery folder. And uh, then we can go to includes and you can see here we have two, uh, it's not tabs, but p p pages here, the C++ and the C. And in one of my old videos, videos I had to include it in the C++, but we can actually have a look at our main. So the main is just called .c, that means it's a C file. So we can add here, um, we can add a directory path and the paths we are going to add here is going to come from our workspace. So I'm just going to go into my video demo project and I'm going to open the components folder and add all three um, folders in there. So open here. That was a common first, then the FT. Uh, you can see here first a common folder, then the FT5336. And the last one here is the N25 like this. And also we're going to add um, the STM32746G discovery folder. I think that should be it. Uh, let's hit apply and apply and close. Okay. So now we, um, we still should be able to build this. Let's just have a look. Ooh, ooh. Um, let's see what happens if we, okay, so the discovery here doesn't like what we just did. Let me just really quick go into my own project here and see how I included all this stuff here. That's exactly the same stuff I did. Uh, also included in C++, but I don't think that should be necessary. Okay. Um, let's just uh, close this and see. Okay, so the problem is that uh, we don't know this UART handle type definition. And of course, we don't know the UART handle type definition because we don't have any UARTs. So we can solve that really quick. Uh, in our project here, I go into the IOC file. 
Uh, so what's hap what's the problem? The problem here is that um, the CubeMX code generator only creates the necessary code, and the 746 discovery board obviously have a few UART UART ports, but we don't. So we'll just uh, open our IRC file and open the connectivity tab here, and um, I'm just using UART6 here. Set this to asynchronous. And uh, I'm not going to do anything more with it uh, for the moment. You can see here that, uh, yeah, we're not going to change anything here. Um, let's just do that and hit Control S. Generate new CubeMX code. And let's see if that should solve the problem. And yes, I know this is maybe a mistake on my part, not... Uh, to have known this, uh, I don't want to edit this out because I really think you should see all the the problems. Okay, let's see here if we can build now. It certainly looks like it. So just by adding the the UART port, and you probably want to have a serial port connected at some point. Uh, at some point, so now you have it, and if you're, you you can follow this entire tutorial using the the discovery board, the F seven four six board, and if you do that, the USART six is the serial port available on the Arduino headers. So there you have it. Okay, so now we have a system that builds. We haven't changed anything yet, but we have a system that builds. So that's uh, that means that we can we have included all these. Um, the files and we should be good to go. So, um, what we want to do is we can go, uh, we should start with the external flash. And let me see here. So, in order to use the external flash, um, we should have a look in in one of the codes that is available if you create a project from the TouchGFX designer. Uh, so, what we can do, we, we can just, let's just create, uh, let's just create a project with TouchGFX designer. It doesn't really matter what we do, we just need to use the, the application template for the 746. And actually, we can just do yeah, we'll just do something here. And uh, we you just call it something that we can find uh, for the video demo. Like this, create this. And we can uh, generate code. So what we're looking for here is actually how the how the QSPI flash is initialized. We have selected very carefully at the, the same QSPI flash here, and that's uh, one of the, the secrets here. Uh, so what I just did here, down in this bar here, you can click this bar and get the console up, click it again and close it. Over to the our right here, we have the browse code. And this is the TouchGFX folder. If you just go up back one uh, here, and then we can go into the STM32 cube IBE here. No, sorry, just go back one and go to the core and the source and open up the main folder here. This is just um, a Notepad++ here. Uh, you can actually see this is the SD RAM that we talked about uh, the last time. You can see the refresh count is definitely different than the one I'm using. And we can go down to the, uh, the quad SPI in it. I mean, can't uh, jump in the code like we can can in the in the cube ID. You just scroll here. Uh, quad SPI in it, and let me see here. You have this um, BSP QSPI in it, and the BSP QSPI memory map mode, and all this stuff. So this is definitely not available when we are. Uh, when we're looking at our cube ID project. Let's just try and copy this. This is not the exact same method that I usually do, um, but we can go to our, uh, where do we have Cortis, Cortis by here, and then insert this. I just hit F3 to go to the definition, and we'll just put this in here. I can hit F3 again here. You can see that we don't know this code here. So 
I think this is available in our QSPI.C here. Let me just see here. Uh, BSPI Q, I, Q in it. Yes, it is here. So um, we have the initialization here. Um, the clock prescaler and the FIFO threshold and sample sizing, all that. We actually set that up in hardware. Um, but I think we have something more. Um, but we don't know. Um, we ha we don't. We cannot go to this uh, this uh, function because we haven't included uh, the header. So what we're gonna do is up top here in our. This is in our main. We're just gonna write include, and then see if we can find the STM32. Uh, I just hit Control Space, and you can see we can just in uh, insert the QSPI here like this, and let's just try to build this. So we want to include our QSPI um, because we want the initialization again. The Cube MX only configures the hardware interface; it doesn't configure any firmware configuration that we obviously need here. Okay, so that was the first thing we, need to, we needed to change. Uh, the second thing we need to change is that we want to move all... Uh, you can see down here, uh, I have my memory regions. Let me just expand this. So we have the flash. Right now we're using 20% of the that is internal flash. So if I go into the memory details, you can see there is a, a uh, section here or an area called ext flash section external flash section but right now it's it's located in the internal flash so we want to move that we want to tell uh, the the project that we have access to external flash and the way we do this is that we uh, we have this uh, linker script down here actually we have two i'm just going to go into the one called flash so if we open this up we just take this down a bit again you can see here we have two memory definitions and again I'm gonna use the same code that is available in in uh, in the project that we just created using the touch effects designer and if we now go this is our main uh, folder here we can go into uh, the STM32 cube IDE we have the same scripts here so we open up the flash scripts here and if we just hold that next to, just minimize this. That wasn't minimize. That was a, okay. So now you can see here, we have three memory regions. We have a quad SPI uh, section. So we just copy this line of code here and insert that into our own linker script. But wait, there's more. Uh, in this linker script here, we have a lot of information on where the different regions should be put. And in the lower lowest part here, you can see here, it's we, we defin define the ext flash section, the font flash section, and the text flash section. And these three sections here, after dot arm dot attribute zero, we copy this, excluding the last um, curly bracket here. Scroll all the way down to our linker script. You can see this is our last line. Just insert this so what we're doing now is that we're telling linger that the external flash section should be placed in the quad spi memory region that we defined in the top also we have font flash section and text flash section these should be uh, put in the quad spi flash uh, and you don't necessarily have to put the last two sections in the quad spi this is if i remember correctly the glyphs for the funds. So this means that all your funds, uh, all the letters, individual letters, will be placed in the Quad SPI. So if you have space for it, you can store it internally and gain a little bit of, I think, uh, performance. But uh, that's entirely up to you. I prefer to store as much as possible in the external flash because then I have more space for other exciting stuff in my microcontroller. Okay, so let's hit build again. And let's see, what we should see now is that the memory region here, we should have the quad SPI that pops up, and it does, which is nice. And the size is 16 megabytes. We are using 80 kilobytes 
that is about 0.49%. If we go to memory details, you can see that in the flash, our external flash uh, section is, is gone. And now we have the ext flash section, the font flash section, text, fl text flash section. They have now been moved all the way to the Quad SPI. Okay, so now the project knows or know that that it should use the, the, the Quad SPI. But we're still not programming the Quad SPI. And this is where it gets a little bit hairy because we can open up our debug uh, configuration. And uh, it comes there. So if we go to debugger here, we can scroll down here and we can say we want to use an external loader. And this external loader is the, it's a program that we use to to program the external flash before we program or after we program the uh, the microcontroller itself. The, the thing is that this external loader, you can see we can press scan here and then we get a list of available um, loaders. And there is a loader called N25Q128A and we can just find the one that is working for the let me just find the, the right one here. Um, the F746G Disco. This flash loader will work with the discovery board. But, and this is, uh, actually maybe we should put a link to this exact moment back in the first video. So before you start developing your own hardware, you should, you should be very aware of this. So if we go back and look at the data sheet. We have this QSBI NCS and the, uh, so the chip select, the clock and the four data pins. These uh, pins here, these six pins here, they obviously have a connection somewhere uh, through the top sheet and down to the microcontroller itself here. So let me just see if I can find this. Um, QSBI, yes, it's all here. QSBI D3, let me just hit control C and control F. Uh, so there is one, there is one, there is one, uh, there should be one more. Uh, okay. Okay. Let me just find it, uh, by ourselves. We have the QSPI clock here. We have the QSPI NCS. So that is on, uh, port, uh, is that P port B2 and port B6 ish. Um, the same way we can find. Let me just see if we can find the rest of them. These they should be here somewhere. Um, the point is that if in the our IDE we just press apply, no, uh, we just press close here and don't save this. The very important point here is that the QSPI interface on our chip has alternate functions or alternate pinouts. And when I designed my board, I may had a, an alternate pin assigned. And the most important thing, maybe uh, there are a lot of important stuff here. The most important thing is that the external loader is pin dependent. That means that if you are working, you can use the same chip or it's the same chip as the 746 discovery board, but if you're using an alternate pinout in the, in the IOC file, it will still not work because you need the external loader. The external loader is a completely self-contained program that runs in the RAM. Um, and if that program doesn't have the right pin definitions, then it won't work. And I spent way too much time figuring this out. So, we can go to Quad SPI here and you can see we have PB2 and PB6 and we have PE2, PF6, PF8 and PF9. And if we go back to this here, uh, what was it? PE2, PE2 is over here. Uh, that is Quad SPI data two. Uh, let's see here, PE2, that is right. And PF6, uh oh, PF6, we have something else here and PF8 and PF9. PF8 uh, is down here. 
and PF9, we definitely don't have the same pinout in in our custom project uh, the, as in the, the discovery board. So, um, there are two options now, or three actually. Um, the first one could be make sure that your hardware is compatible with the with the 746 disco board and if you're using the same QSBI flash well then you just use that lo the external loader the, that we found in the list the next option uh, could be to write your own external loader uh, that's the right way to do because then you are not dependent depending on anything there are, should be some projects available along with the um, with the stm 32 q programmer that you should be able, they say that uh, ST say that that it should be easy to, to do this um, I personally haven't made that work yet uh, that is a topic for a video on itself uh, I know that uh, I really wanted to show you how to make your own external loader because this is a huge issue. So what I ended up doing uh, <laughs> is that I uh, I was lucky enough to find a guy uh, I call, a guy called Clive on the community that actually made uh, a few of these external loaders and knew that they were working. And one of the drivers or external loaders that he had uploaded very graciously, thank you again, um, was one that worked with my exact pinout. Uh, since I was using the sec exact same flash as the as the discovery board, uh, uh, it was only the pinout that was wrong for me. So I quickly uh, downloaded this driver and tried it out. And when I figured out that it was working, I um, I tipped him through PayPal. And if you have the same issue and you're using one of his drivers, you definitely should send him a tip because this is saving you a lot of time. All right. So if you find one of these drivers online and it's in a post where Clive uh, very nicely asks for a tip, do send him some. I did that and uh, he was very kind and said, thank you very much. Um, I've been using this driver ever since. Uh, <laughs> so of course this is not the the way that I wanted it to be, but I think that if you start working on an external drive, or external loader, you have your work cut out for you. Um, I would like to see a video on how to do it, uh, but for now, I'm just very happy to have found an external loader that works for me, and then I can carry on with my business. So, what I want to do here, I'm going to close down my IOC here, I'm going to go to the debug configurations, and I'm going to select the uh, external loader that uh, I have from Clive, Clive one here. So this was this is the one that is working for me. Uh, compress apply. I might want to show you where to find this. Uh, where should you? Which folder should you put it in? Because that is not very straightforward. So what I'm I'm gonna do here? I'm gonna open up a browser or not a file explorer. Uh, this is just my uh, my root. Uh, my C drive, and in the folder called ST, this of course only works if you have installed in the default location. But you have this STM32 cube ID. Uh, I used uh, 130. I have updated it, uh, and with every update, you need to redo this. So in this folder here, you have a lot of different folders. So I'm searching here for uh, star.stldr and then star again. So the stars is a wildcard, if you're not familiar with those. So I will match any file that has the last name .stldr, just to make sure. And you have a very long uh, folder name here. But what is important here is that we have a lot of external, these are all external loaders. Uh, you can see here that uh, we have a lot of external loaders. Um, but if you look at the uh, the folder where it's located, you can see here it's called 150. There's also 140, and there should be also a 130. It's probably gone. Um, so you want to navigate to the 150, that is our cube ID version. Right click this, and I can just select one of them, and then open file location. So here we have all the STLDRs, the external loaders that are becoming available when we're hitting that scan button. So 
this is where you put your own external loader or the one you find online or yeah so when we press the scan button here we get uh, the contents all the loaders in that folder okay so we uh, have enabled this and I'm pressing debug uh, and my ST link is unconnected just hook that up like this okay then press debug again let's see what happens I should probably turn this one on now so we don't expect uh, oh uh, load failed okay press Okay, let's just try that one more time. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let me just ch check our debug configuration one more time here. Uh, okay, I just scanned for my ST link here. I'm just removing that. Uh, it has to be a specific one. Apply, try to be debugging again. It might be caused by having the ST-Link plugging in. No? Load failed. What the hell? Uh, sorry about that. Let's just try to clean the project and build everything again. Okay, uh, let's try to debug that again. Hmm. Load failed. Interesting. We can just try to remove the external uh, flash here. Uh, remove this quad SPI section like this. Let's just see if it was it's working just when we left it. That's when we left it. Uh, no, fail to erase memory. Okay, let's go into our deeper configuration and remove our external. Oh, the external loader isn't connected. Hmm. Remove this, debug, let's see if that works. So there's definitely something wrong with the flashing operation. Okay, let's just try to re-enable the quad SPI like this. and then go to our debug configuration this is the right one we want to ex use the external loader scan this for this one apply debug let's see what happens that is really strange fail to erase memory okay so it's still the internal one let's see if Mm, just close this one and close this one. Uh, that's really strange. I'm just going to remove all this from our linker script. Save this and I'm going to comment this out. Save it again and remove the external loader here and apply and debug and see if that helps now we should be in exactly the same situation as okay we're getting all kinds of different errors here uh, let me just try to close down this one i'm gonna turn off the power for the device just for a second and then just just start the cube ide up again I don't know what happened there, but uh, okay. This v let's just try to 
debug as this. Okay. Just unplugging everything. Now I shouldn't have unplugged that. Let me see. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Yeah. So far. Okay. So we just needed to replug our uh, IST link. On the other hand, I just unplugged the, the other display. Let me just try to uh, turn that back on. No. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, we're waiting and press play here. I got a wide screen, but you obviously can't see that. Let me just see if I can get this to work. Uh, yeah. So there we have it. Uh, so now we have we are in the same position as we were before. Um, yes, I know I could edit this out, but I want you to to see my fails as well. Um, let's try to add that uh, external flash one more time. Let's see if that happens. Go to the linker script. Uh, we want to add this quad SPI region, and down here we just insert all this stuff again here. Okay, uh, save this and. I want to go in my debug configuration. I want to add our external loader, apply and debug and see what happens. So now rebuilding, we should see the region um, coming up again. There we have it. And now we could program. Let's hit resume. Have a wide screen here for some time. And then we have garbage data. So th this right here means that the display is it was supposed to load uh, from the from the the quad SPI, but it doesn't. So there is clearly something else missing here. And uh, let's just terminate this debug, debug session because I know I think I know what is uh, the problem here. And the problem is that. Um, when we're using this external flash, we also need to uh, turn on the memory protection unit. And uh, what we can do again is we can navigate to the uh, the demo application here um, that we just created. Let's have a look in the core folder here and the source. There is this main file. This is the main file. Um, so let's have a look at, let's see here. You can actually see um, from the first in the first video, I added a lot of uh, code uh, somehow found magically about the the SDRAM, and that is actually located here. So if you find the, the FMC in it, you can see we have the initialize the SDRAM, and then we have all this stuff here. That's uh, that's just copied from here. Um, but just let's just uh, go through this. You can see we have actually have this MPU config. And uh, we, uh, I'm gonna try and copy this. Um, I'm not sure if we can set this up in our in our IOC file. So I'm just gonna copy this. I believe that in the old uh, TouchGFX Designer projects, this was inserted directly after the the Quad SPI. Uh, set up. So let me just uh, try and go into our code and find the quad SPI in it. You have here after the uh, after you, the this here we insert this here, and I'm probably gonna get some error because this MPU uh, type definition does not exist. Let's see if um, if this works. Oh, it does work. Nice. Let's try to debug this again. Very exciting. Try to resume. Wide screen. Hopefully we'll get the red background with the button. No, still no dice. Okay, uh, let's go back here. 
Okay. Um, so let's see. Um, so we, we I know we, that we need this this stuff here, um, but we probably need something more. Um, but what we exactly we need, I'm not completely sure of. Uh, let's see here. So we have the PSP QSPI in it. Actually, I will go into my working project here and look at what is going on. So I know that this uh, Quad SPI in it is supposed to do something here. You have the PSP QSPI in it. You can see we have the memory map mode. We have the this, all this stuff here. Um, so this should actually work. Uh, let me just check if the main in our project here, Quad SPI, is having the same setup here as the main in. So the the top one is the one that I know is working, and the bottom one is uh, the one we're trying to get to work. Uh, let me see. We have the. <laughs> uh, okay, so I don't disable the MPU. Maybe that is the thing. Let's just try to remove this and re redo this. Again, we could edit every everything out, but um, chances are that you might find yourself in the same problems as I am right now okay let's see here so it should pop back up immediately um, it doesn't actually we go directly into the hard fault uh, handler here so we could backtrace and see okay we can actually see uh, the function calls here we are seeing the uh, touch GFX in it and we're seeing the set language here uh, that's the one we are failing at so to speak um, so let me just stop this again. Okay, I wanted this to be all the way up here. Okay. And I want to close all these down here. So what could be the problem? And we might find in a second that this is probably um something really simple uh or you might sit and pull your hair and say hey why aren't you doing this um so I'm not, right now i'm just comparing uh because I obviously have some more information um, and I really want, want would like to be able to tell you where I got this from because um, you can see here that it seems that I have just a smidge more code here. Um, so we have the enable, we have the base address, we have the MPU region size, we have the MPU region full access. Access permission is bufferable, uh, not bufferable, uh, cacheable. MPU region number. Uh, region number zero. Hmm, interesting. Why should that be uh, an issue? And uh, we have this uh, text level zero. We have sub region disabled zero, and. Uh, so the only thing that is changed is the region is uh, it's number two here and it's number zero here and down here we have what region three okay so let's change this to number two two there and three here let's see if that changes anything
So this is quickly turning out to be not the video that I wanted to show you. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is still not working. That was also grasping uh, for straws here. Let's just turn this back here. Um, zero like this. Okay, so definitely we need something more here. Uh, QSPI in it. Where is this? Uh, this is in our discovery underscore QSPI here. Let me see in my project. Uh, I've included that as well. Um, shouldn't change anything, but I'm going to do like this. Uh huh. And Uh, I have my own MPU config, maybe that does something, but I wouldn't be surprised. Let's see here if so. Actually, our that is the MPU config that we just found in uh, in the project that was created by the designer here. Um, so we disable the MPU here, and we enable the MPU da up there, down there. So there is no change. Okay. Uh, no change at all. Um, so what you could do is that you could... I have another video where I'm trying out the performance... or not performance, I'm, I'm trying the connection to the external flash. And if you're... Uh, uncertain that that connection is working at all you could go through that video um, and see if if you have some issues there let me just real quick go through this memory map mode uh, so this is coming from no, we shouldn't be working in this project here. We should be working down here. QSPI.C. Mm -mm. So it might be because we are overriding with these values here. Uh, so the BSP QSPI in it here is overriding uh, the values that I have in my uh, from my quad SPI is different um, so the speed settings are different uh, let me just double check this so uh, this one here is 16 megabytes so that is fine and we need six cycles and clock mode okay so that wasn't it so as far as I remember I didn't change anything in these drivers here but uh, something could have changed Oh yeah. So this is uh, probably the root cause here. Um, remember what I said about the external loaders being pin specific. I think I have changed these pins as well. So if we go into our my working project and locate this exact file, I'm pretty sure we will see a block of definitions that are in inserted instead of these. So we open this working project, we open up this qspi.h. Let me just close this down. So this one here is, um, you can see that it's in the video demo. This one here, aha. Uh -huh. So these are the definitions active. I will just copy these. So remember we had the, the, the pins on port B, B and F and F and E and F. So 
these definitions we will copy over here we'll just remove this definition here and try this one more time so we still need the MPU part I think but uh, it surely helps with the right pins let's just try to press resume here yes okay I, I pressed um, pressed uh, resume before we were done verifying let's just hit the program one more time so yes I know we can just edit out the last 10 minutes of video uh, you're welcome to skip it tell your friends or whatever um, let's just try one more time here resume so now we have uh, we still don't have the touch screen I know we're working on that um, but we have the external flash running and uh, you can laugh all you that you want <laughs> this uh, this was not supposed to be uh, like this but hey okay so we can do the same thing now we are in uh, the 51st minute of this video it's gonna be very long sorry again um, we're gonna do the same thing with the touchscreen and um, touchscreen on the the discovery board discovery board sorry is uh, using this um, discovery underscore TS dot C file here and uh, so this is um, the driver um, for the touchscreen actually um, while we are in here we have this uh, TS underscore uh, TS orientation uh, variable and if you experience that your touchscreen is inverted in one or both directions you can actually set this so you have this TS underscore swap um, Uh, we should have at least uh, it should be in the H file uh, here so you can swap either none the X or Y or both axes by inserting this that's uh, pretty interesting and nice to know so of course we uh, we should use this touchscreen driver somewhere uh, let me just close down my project here okay in our project here um, we go into the touch GFX folder and into the target folder we have this stm32 touch controller .cpp, and I want to include here include the uh, stm32 uh, 74 no uh, missing something oh yeah this is uh, a CPP file so we right click our uh, project go to properties go to our general and paths and symbols we want to add to the C++ tab we want to add a workspace file a workspace um, folder in our video demo here we can add this STM32746 discovery folder so remember when I said that we just needed to add for the C we obviously need to add C++ folder as well apply apply and close now we should be able to include STM 32.7 the touch screen ta-da okay so what do we want to uh, we want to initialize our touch screen driver and uh, let's just BSP underscore I can't remember what it's called so let's go into the touch screen driver here and see what functions we have there is probably called one bsp underscore ts underscore int yes that's the one we want bsp underscore ts underscore underscore no uh, let's just save this so I just added this include statement but I didn't save the file and the QBuddy only knows that it should include this in its indexing search indexing when we have saved it so when you you need to save after you include this, uh, have written the include statement so now we can press control space and you can see you have the bsp underscore ts underscore in it and it takes two arguments uh, the size x and size y and you should probably figure out or find some global um, variable that sets the size sets the size of the screen but uh, for now I'm just writing 480 by 272 and then be done with it because now we have in initialized 
our touch controller. And so now I will go back to our working project uh, here, go to the touch effects and the target folder because in this we, we're opening the same file and you can see that we are uh, initializing the driver um, but also we are, um, we are copying this one here I think it's this one at least uh, I think all the other stuff is actually in our uh, discovery driver so let's just try to copy this and see what happens uh, insert this here I'm not sure we're gonna get this TS driver anywhere so we're probably gonna get some error yeah uh, so we have uh, just included we just include all this up here um, like this also we haven't initialized our uh, I square C uh, <laughs> so we need to include our, uh, we need to go into our uh, IOC file here I think I square C3 is the one we're looking for it's saying that it wants an external I square C handle type definition uh, I square C3 so let's just add that shall we I think this is using this uh, default so connectivity I square C3 I square C like this I'm just gonna leave that as is press control S for save let's see we might get lucky um, there's one thing I do know that we need to change because the we are using the driver for the 746 board and the 746 board is multi multi-touch and I know that my display isn't so it's a different uh, let me just close a lot of these windows here because that is gonna get confusing really fast okay so the thing that's going to happen is that this is not going to work at uh, at this moment because in this uh, touchscreen driver here uh, let's see if we can find it uh, there will be a oh no it's not here it's in our components in our ft5336 header file so the the folder I have opened now is the core of the driver for the touchscreen and I think it's the same I square C address but it has an ID that it looks up uh, let's see if we can find it um, I think it's uh, either it's no it's not da, 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 da. ID value here this uh, expects a hexadecimal 51 so I'm just gonna again go into my working project and see what I have written there uh, in my components FT I didn't rename the file I should have um, so you can see here I found the uh, this my driver will return a 79 instead so if I go back here and write uh, just come this out and write 79 so you obviously need to find the the data sheet for your exact driver I was lucky enough to have it it's more or less like the FT5336 so I could just do like this um, I think I also removed all the multi-touch functions um, let's see if we can just debug this and maybe it will work maybe it won't not yet so let's just go back and see if we can find other discrepancies here um, I have a state register called BC uh, it's the same here okay so what we can do here is uh, 
uh, maybe let me just check the first so it's still this is still my working uh, system here uh, and I think max detectable touch 5 and if we go to this one so this is pretty much the same stuff here um, I think I removed all this stuff here. So everything above the fourth or oh, fifth here. So I'm going to remove all this stuff here. And also I remove all this. This My driver doesn't support the weight uh, of the... So these register definitions here. Let me just remove these. Like this, and now we should hopefully get some errors um, because now we can figure out where this is used. Uh, so all these cases here, case uh, five to nine, just remove these like this. Let's see if we can get this to work. Still a lot of errors. I was expecting this. Okay, so all this weight here. Mm. Just remove all this stuff here. And uh, everything above the fifth touch here. Just remove this, like this. I'm still not sure this will just work like this, but let's see. I did this a long time ago and uh, after it has been working, I haven't looked at this ever since. So there's still nothing going on here, but let's try to debug this the the real way. Uh, let's go into our, um, let's just close our working project, go into this that we're actually working on here. So we can open this touch controller. Let's just close this down here like this. I probably need something more and you can probably see what this already but let's see here um, it's just gonna set okay uh, we hit the breakpoint already let's just go in here let's see here okay so we, we don't get this TS driver here let's just see okay so the driver isn't initializing uh, properly let's see here TS driver Okay, um, and we have this. Uh, da, da, da. Touch green. Let's go into our common here. That's our ts.h. So that was actually the function in it. Okay, and let's see if we can find the probably already have that open here in it let me just check something real quick here uh, if I go to my working part here I know that I'm constantly constantly referring to um, to this here okay so I'm using something completely different here that's interesting. Where do I get this code from? Uh, so they probably rewrote the the driver. Hmm. Interesting. This is the old code. Let me just try to insert this real quick into our touch controller like this and we can remove all this stuff here because this BSP is using a drivers from uh, from the
from the STM. So you should have the get state somewhere down here. PSP init, init in get state as get state, yeah. So the driver we're actually including here is, let's just close again everything that we don't looking at. And if this is working, then I will uh, do a thorough walkthrough of what is actually going on here. Uh, what are we waiting for here? Let's just do that one more time. That was really strange. Oh, <laughs> so something is definitely going on here. Um, let me just see the touch screen in it is uh, let's see what that is going what is that is doing uh, I square C address this uh, okay So it is using the strange. Let's see if we can just initialize the touch screen and see if that where that brings us. Yeah, it doesn't work yet. Okay, but but the system is running. That's actually the important thing. I just want to make sure that. Okay, so that initialization here is going all right. I think. Um, let's see here. Um, The I square C address, where is that coming from? It's probably not being set anywhere. Nice. Uh, <laughs> so that's where it might not work. Let's see if I have changed anything in this. I shouldn't have though. This is pretty much the same file as it used to be. Uh, if I changed anything, it would be in the driver itself. Let me just see here. So this is my working one. And let's see what's inside of the not so working one. Let's just have them close together like this. So to my right, I have my working and to the left, I have the non-working. And let's just see if there is something that is out of the ordinary. So this same stuff here. And it's probably some register somewhere that uh, okay, so we have a lot of stuff here that's not supported. That is uh, no gesture, move up, right, down, left. We have the single click, double click, clockwise. Let's remove those. Okay, we have the status register, status mask, like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I kept the five first, but that's okay. T 
touch pressure register that I don't have. Just just remove this. Um, and all this I don't have. Remove this. And I don't have uh, this. So right now I'm just removing all the stuff that I. Yeah, I know it's a boring video right at this point. Um, I was actually I hadn't I had forgot how tedious this project was. I uh, and process how tedious this project uh, process was uh, because. This is not fun to watch. I I acknowledge that, um, but uh, we need it nonetheless. So um, when I remove a lot of stuff here, I expect a lot of errors as well, and uh, hopefully we should be able to see those errors and and then uh, we should be able to carry on. Just make sure that everything is okay. So now I'm no, I've removed everything that I know won't won't work. Let's see if, how many errors we can get from this. Um, so we might get something to work. Read weight of touch index. I'm pretty sure I just I just removed all this altogether. And of course, it doesn't. It's not sure that that you have these issues at all. Uh, you might have the same driver. Uh, you might use an all together different driver. So you have to write this uh, from from start to finish. Uh, but let's see. Let's see if this works. This is a, the video demo project being debugged. Uh, and so we are initializing, I think, um, like we should. We uh, can open up the touch controller here let's see if we can just do like this save yeah this video also turned out to be a lot more longer than it was supposed to be and but hey if we end up with a working project i think that's uh, th that's the goal um let's see what we do here okay so we don't go into directly to a hard fold let resume and if this works then we are having a touch screen ah. Okay, no touch screen yet. What's going on here? Can we uh, go in here? Yes, okay, so the state is touch detected. It's a zero. Fine, okay. Let's see what happens if we go here. Okay, so we actually go in here and uh, we can report a state. We have a touch, yes, and we have uh, probably a coordinate, yes. Fine, and re re we return true. Uh, so why isn't this working? Um, this touch controller sample touch should actually. Oh, maybe did we include an interaction? Let's just double check that in our touch effects designer, because if we didn't do the interaction, or it has been removed in some way. Then of course, okay, so when the button, button one is clicked, we change the screen to screen one. Yes, we have one button here. Uh, let's just regenerate this code here. Maybe we forgot to generate the code in the first place. So we know that the touch controller is actually working as intended. Let's just renew this. No. Oh. So there's definitely something working. We got a touch, but maybe we have um, maybe we have uh, some inversion going on, and we just mentioned. A few seconds ago, a few minutes ago, okay, a lot of minutes ago, uh, how to deal with this. Uh, so we have 
we can do two things now. Either we can just brute force our way through this, or we can try to. Actually, we're just going to brute force this. Brute, brute force this. That's probably the easiest thing. Uh, let's see if we can find the discovery ts.h here. Uh, that was a swap. Let's go to the ts.c here. So the swap is xy. Uh, so we are swapping both axes. Let's just try to. Why? We just try to swap none. Uh, unused. Yeah, okay, we can just remove those. That was in the driver as well. Be gone. No swapping. Try to debug this. Come on. We are so close. And thanks for sticking with me if you're watching this whole damn thing. Uh, <laughs> this is. Yeah, I, I really want to do shorter videos. I really want to do that. Okay, so. Oh, yeah. So we just needed to swap the X and Y and remove that. And so now we have a working touchscreen driver. Again, this only works because my touchscreen driver is more or less the same as the original one. You might get unlucky and have to do um, one of your own. But um, let's just have a look because now I, I can't find the code where I copied this from because I didn't write this myself. But So let's have a look at what's actually going on. So we start by uh, defining a state. Uh, this uh, state type definition, let's just see what that is. Uh, it has a uint8, uh, an unsigned int, um, with the touch detected, and then it has a coordinate for x and y. And uh, if multi-touch is supported, um, it says, but uh, that says in the driver, so we really don't support that. Um, then it also has a touch weight and the event ID and touch area and, and stuff like that. But we won't have that. So we are we have a struct uh, with which we call state, and then we are calling this our driver uh, this BSP underscore TS underscore get state with the with the pointer. Uh, so we can we update this struct of data, and if the touch detected is true. Uh, then we take the coordinates x and y and we proceed to return those uh, through pointers uh, in the sample touch uh, function or method here and then we return a true because then the internal functionality in the touch gfx will uh, notice that hey we have a touch and then it can handle uh, where did we touch and if we touch the button then we can act upon that and uh, it will automatically de detect if we are if we are dragging our finger along the screen or stuff like that. So take a good long look at this code here. And um, so if we don't detect a touch, then we will just return false here. And that's it. This was uh, how it was done uh, in previous versions of the touch GFX. And I just seem to have. Uh, copied this so many times so I actually forgot how it was working so yeah remember that the touch screen could actually be working but we are just uh, missing out the um, the swap uh, of the of the axis and yeah <laughs> so uh, in just uh, less than three hours total of video time, you should be able to uh, create a system from scratch with uh, at least this type of screen here with your own uh, custom board and uh, everything custom. Um, yeah, so that was the integration of the external loader. That was quite tough as well. And the, the touch screen, I did a few screw ups there. I'm sorry about that. I hope that this video has audio all the way through. I hope you stick with me for this duration. I hope the audio is okay. And um, otherwise I might have to do all this all over again. Uh, yeah. So until next time, 
Thanks for watching.